Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about superior epigastric vessels and the inferior epigastric vessels. The superior epigastric artery is a terminal branch of the internal thoracic artery. Internal thoracic artery is a branch of the subclavian artery. Okay, the Superepigastric artery begins at the sixth intercostal space. It enters the abdomen by passing behind the seventh costal cartilage between the costal and gyphoid origin of the diaphragm. It is the content of the rectus sheath and it enters the rectus sheath by crossing the upper border of the transversus abdominis muscle. It anastomoses with the inferior epigastric artery on the posterior surface of the rectus abdominis muscle at the level of the umbilicus. It is the usual site of anastomosis. It may be little up, maybe little down and this anastomosis happen on the posterior wall of the rectus abdominis and very rarely on the anterior wall of the rectus abdominis. It provides a hepatic branch along the falciform ligament. It anastomoses with the superepigastric artery of the other side near the lower part of the gyphoid process usually. Okay, so if we look at the image here, okay, this is from Gray's and Last of Anatomy. We have the superior epigastric artery, that is a branch of internal thoracic artery. Okay, and this is the rectus abdominis muscle, and the artery passes behind the rectus abdominis muscle and anastomos the superior with the inferior epigastric artery here. So this is superior epigastric artery and this is the inferior epigastric artery. Inferior epigastric artery is a branch of the external iliac artery. It is a branch of external iliac artery and these two anastomos on the posterior surface of the rectus abdominis usually at the level of the umbilicus. So again this is the superior epigastric artery here it may split like this and this is the internal thoracic artery that is a branch of the subclavian artery so this artery is very close to the gyphoid process here it is a content of rectus sheath and it anastomos to that of the inferior epigastric artery that is a branch of the external iliac artery okay there is a branch of the external iliac artery. Okay, we got that. These are the and there is anastomosis behind the rectus abdominis at the level of the umbilicus. So if you go to the inferior epigastric artery, inferior epigastric artery is a branch of the external iliac artery, it ascends upwards and medially in the extra peritoneal connective tissue, pierces the fascia transversalis and enters the rectus sheath and anastomosis with the superior epigastric artery. Inferior epigastric artery forms the lateral boundary of the Hasselbeck's triangle, also called inguinal triangle. This artery is medial to the deep inguinal ring. This artery is a content of the rectus sheath. And we know that inferior epigastric artery anastomosis with that of the superior epigastric artery behind the rectus abdominis muscle at the level of the umbilicus. The inferior epigastric artery is crossed by ductus arteriosus. It is also it also anastomosis with the obturator artery, which is very important. Sometimes, in in a significant number of patients, the anastomotic channel of the inferior epigastric artery and the obturator artery is very big. There is called accessory obturator artery that may be damaged during surgery in that area. Okay, so obturator artery, it may come from the internal iliac artery usually, but it may also 
get significant amount of blood or may origin from the inferior pigastic artery. So what are the branches of inferior epigastric artery? Inferior epigastric artery has three masteric branches in male, a branch to the round ligament in female, pubic branch and muscular branch. Muscular branch it supplies the inferior epigastric artery supplies the rectus abdominis muscle like superior epigastric artery. It also supplies the pyramidal muscle. Okay. So, it is muscular branch and it has cutaneous branches. So, what is the clinical correlation? Epigastric arteries are accompanied by corresponding vein. Superior epigastric artery passes along with the superior, superior epigastric vein. Inferior epigastric artery is accompanied by the so accompanied by the inferior epigastric vein. So, superior epigastric artery accompanied by superior epigastric vein, inferior epigastric artery accompanied by inferior epigastric vein. Epigastric vessels have anastomotic channels. That is very important. If the aorta is obstructed, as for example in coarctus of the aorta, it may be in other part obstruction, other part of the aorta obstruction may also cause that problem. But coarctation of the aorta, narrowing of the aorta, just beyond the arch of the aorta, that is a very common condition, very common congenital anomaly. Okay. So, if there is any obstruction in the aorta, as in coarctation of the aorta, collateral circulation is established through the anastomotic channel of the superior and inferior epigastric arteries and provide blood supply to the lower part of the body. On the other hand, if the inferior vena cava is obstructed, blood from the lower part of the body reaches the heart via the anastomotic channel of the superior and inferior epigastric veins. Okay. Abdominal hematoma may develop from rupture of the epigastric vessel or the anastomosis. Suppose a person is standing behind a horse, he got a kick from the horse, then that may lead to abdominal wall, inter abdominal wall hematoma that may be due to rupture of the epigastric vessels or its anastomosis. And that's all about the superior epigastric artery and inferior epigastric artery. We have another superficial epigastric artery. There is a branch of femoral artery. We have not discussed that part. So that's all about the superior epigastric artery and inferior epigastric artery. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends. And please support my channel. Please subscribe me. Have a nice day. Bye now.